What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here with my good friend Paul Miller, and we are on the east coast of Florida today, and we're going to go into a really cool pet store, Cold Blooded Kingdom, owned by our friend Josh, and we're going to see what great stuff he's got in here. This is one of my first on-location uh, shoots that I've done in quite a while, and uh, I think we're going to see some really cool stuff here, Paul. What do you think? Yeah, it's a really super nice shop. It's got a ton of cool animals, and uh, let's go in and check it out. All right, we're here with the owner of the store, Josh Buckwald, and uh, I came into the store, I did my little look around, and I'm like so impressed with this store. How long have you uh, actually owned this now for? Uh, we've had it for a year and a half, so we, we went through like a major renovation, and we totally redid the entire store, so it's been about a year and a half. The feedback's been phenomenal, and we, uh, the staff puts a ton of work into all the animals and the caging and whatnot. You so. guys built all these cages? Yeah, we have a buddy of ours that builds them, and then my staff uh, does the 3D interior, and we create the environment that's uh, perfect for the species we put in. I mean, gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous. You know, yeah. so these that. are for more. These are for tree monitors, and you can use this for other arboreal monitor species, as well as there's certain uh, you know colubrids and pythons that would benefit from a setup like this too. So we're trying to give them exactly what they need, and uh, we don't want to we don't want to just walk in here and be able to see them if they don't want to be seen. You know, right. for the most part, they come out and they have all their uh, necessary uh, yeah. needs. They, right. they seem to be liking it. They seem, I noticed that they seem to like to go really high up. I guess that's where you have your basking light up there? Yes, that's where the basking light is. And the, the temperatures up there are somewhere between 115 to 120, which is perfect for them. But the cage is large enough so that if they wanted to get down to more of a room temp, they can. And what do you feed uh, the green trees? They've got such a, a broad diet, anything from insects to ground turkey, eggs, fish, uh, a little bit of everything. They like to feed roaches, crickets occasionally. Uh, there's just endless rodents. They eat a little bit of everything. Right, and it's good to give them a, a variety of, of foods, I would Absolutely. assume, as opposed to just one particular food. Correct, yeah, and they're really inquisitive, so if you if you put stuff in there, you'll see them reaching in with their hands to go ahead and grab a cricket. <laughs> I've seen some wild stuff from these guys. They're definitely my favorite when you set up a, um, a green tree or a blue tree or a black tree python, is height, it seems like height seems to be more important from the way I'm looking at these cages. Definitely. I mean, they're tree dwellers, so they like to actually look down on you. They feel most comfortable that way. Mm -hmm. So whenever we sell one, whether it's a baby or whether it's an adult, we recommend minimum at least a four foot tall enclosure. Okay. These are eight footers. Um, these are phenomenal if you could pull it off. Not only are they great for the animal, but I, you know, I think they're beautiful. They look great in, in your home or wherever right. you decide to keep exactly. them. What so, kind of bedding do you use down there? We use cypress. Um, you can use a little bit of anything for bioactive soil, but we're typically not going to hit the floor at all. It's very rare that you see them go to the ground. And mm -hmm. when we're breeding them, even for nest boxes, we'll actually mount the next the, the nest boxes about halfway uh, height-wise for the cage. So they really rarely hit the ground. You can put any kind of soil, mm -hmm. but anything that keeps really good humidity is going to be preferred for them. And uh, what, at what age do these breed usually? So a lot of them will breed around the three to four year mark, um, and they can go for quite a while, well, around three to four years. Do they multiple clutch these? Uh, yes, some will double clutch, but they, they have small, small clutches. And what's uh, the incubation of the eggs? The incubation time? Yes. It's, it could be as long as... 200 days, 180 oh, wow. days minimum, stuff yeah. like that. It'll, it'll go further. Right. Um, these actually hatch out a lot quicker than the lace monitor eggs hatch out. We're waiting about nine months for, for other... It's a human right there. ...Varana species. Yeah, it's wild. Well, you know, they got a big brain, so yeah. it takes a lot of time yeah. to cook them. Let's go see some, uh, some more yeah. monitors. As far as cohabitating, like a lot of people like to, you know, the idea of having more than one lizard. I see the, yeah. the tree monitors are together. Would you... Are there any other species that you can keep, you know, cohabitated, males and females? Well, as far as the monitors go, the smaller the monitor, the easier it's going to be to keep them together so you can give them enough space. But if you have a big, you know, if you have a big lizard, like a big lace monitor pair, it's possible to keep them together year round. I just don't recommend it, you know, given their size and some of them can be a little territorial. But the tree monitors in particular, tend to cohab better than, than most. These are beautiful. These are the blue yeah. tree monitors. These are the yeah. blue trees, uh, Varanus macrae. They're really cool. <laughs> They're the most popular because of just, you know, 
how color. vibrant they are. Yeah. You see one up there just looking at us. Yeah. And uh, again, they're highly intelligent. We've kept them together, we've cohabbed them, and they don't seem to have an issue with it at all. And do they just, do they seem to breed at a certain time of the year, or is it like kind of random at this point? Well, in captivity, um, they still will breed at a certain time of the year. What, what's so, usually, like after winter kind of thing? Well, we just finished the hatching season for them a few weeks ago. Oh, wow. People, most people have already hatched them out uh, se uh, several weeks ago. Okay, so, but they, that means they laid those eggs, what, months ago, though? Oh, yeah. So the incubation period is almost 200 days. So you're talking about... So they're almost ready to go again, right? Yeah. Well, you got to get the females back up to size. And we separate our girls. These are just for show. But at a breeding facility, we separate our girls. And then we'll introduce the male, and then we'll, we'll pull them out. I got you. So you don't keep them all year together? No, no. In the store, if we have a display, um, if we're not breeding them, then, you know, we, we keep them together. But gotcha. For the most part, I like to keep the girls by themselves and, and have mm -hmm. everything separated. It's better because if you're having a problem with an animal, it's always good to keep them separate, just in case you have to address certain things, certain mm -hmm. medications or whatnot, um, in order to make sure that uh, you don't transfer anything over to the next thing. So these cases of you get very good hygiene in here. Everything's nice and clean. I love it. Gotta keep it clean, yep. um, especially when you're working with live animals. Talk to me about the black, uh, the black ones. The the black tree loners or um, Varanus bakari. Those are really really cool. They're one of the smaller uh, sizes of the tree monitors. Um, not a whole lot of these come in. The most popular one is the Prasinus, which are the green ones. And these guys are known for being the smallest, but they also pack the biggest punch as far as uh, when it comes to uh, bite force. Oh, I really? That for sure. Um, they're really, really cool. They kind of look like uh, they're like a black dragon for someone that doesn't want to deal with an Asian water monitor that mm. big. But they're not going to be as social as Asian water monitors. They're definitely more flighty. Mm -hmm. But they're, again, highly intelligent. They're part of the tree monitor mm -hmm. family. Same, similar diet, uh, just they vary in color and size. Well, how come you don't have them? You love black. Yeah, they're on my list. Um, I'm getting some uh, on the next shipment that comes in from Indo. So I'll be adding those back. I've had m many of them over the years, um, but uh, that is one species I'll definitely keep. They're smaller, I have the space for it. Yeah. And, and what, uh, what size would be a minimum cage size for these guys? Just stick to the same exact thing as the other species. I like a four, a four by four, give them at least uh, four feet in height. Um, and then you know the depth isn't uh, as important. Even for the even height. for the adults. Correct. Okay. Yeah. The babies you can keep a baby in an eighteen uh, by twenty four terrarium, mm -hmm. like a zoomed terrarium. Right. But again, you know they grow pretty fast, and you'll want to give them enough room to, to feel secure. A lot of hiding gotcha. pots too. Right. Yeah. What is this we're looking at here? So that's an uh, adult male Bell's Phase lace monitor. So it's like the guy you had a uh, Paul in your place. Yeah, and actually Josh bought mine. He yeah. bought the three I had. We got a couple from Paul, but uh, this guy here is, uh, well, they're He's originally big. from Australia. This is as really as big as an adult male will get. He's a pretty impressive animal. Mm -hmm. um, they're awesome. What's their temperament? So he's a little uh, testy. When you get him out, he definitely, um, He's got a bit of an attitude and he's very food aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean that all lace monitors are that way, but him in particular. They all have their own personality, like people. Exactly. So he's uh, he's on the, the defensive sometimes. He's a big boy, so you really don't want to mess around with him. Right. Um, unless you have to. You're going to tongue feed this guy, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends on his mood. Some days he's relaxing and you can give him something out of your hands, but it's few and far between. He has his moments. What a beautiful he's thing. Gorgeous. I mean, he's gorgeous. Really yeah. he's, he's, now, what, what do you feed these pretty much anything? I like to stick to, to poultry. I do a lot of chicken here, chicks. Yeah, why is that? I notice a lot of the monitor breeds, the top ones stick with, with the birds as opposed to like rodents. Yeah, it's just a, a leaner, better source of protein. I find they do better on them. You never want to have a, an obese monitor or an obese animal in mm -hmm. general. And we find that they do best on chicks, quails, and chicken. Um, you can give it to them with the bone. If not, put some you, calcium on. Oh, really? You can actually buy like a regular just chicken parts and give yeah, it to them. Yeah, just like drumsticks. He'll take them down. He'll wow. take about five of them down. Oh my god! You know, and those are cheap too. You know, so yeah, they're they're affordable. For, well, now nothing's cheap. Anymore. Nothing's cheap anymore. <laughs> but, sure. but you know what? We have most success with poultry. I feed a lot of uh, ground turkey as well. So if you go throughout the store, we have a ton of monitors. Mm. So you go through a ton of ground turkey. And they'll also eat eggs. They love eggs. It's a great source whole of eggs? protein. Whole eggs. Um, for the little babies, we crush them up. Mm -hmm. But they absolutely love it. And I find that the poultry is definitely the best option for them. I love it. Um, I love fish. 
can be good uh, depending on the species. But I really, we've had a lot of success with, with, uh, with, with poultry. poultry yeah. I, you know, I, I always wonder if maybe more snakes should be fed uh, birds. Like, you know, in the wild, carpets, you know, and all the Australian pythons yeah. eat a lot of birds in the wild, but yet yeah. we feed everything rodents. I mean, I wonder, you know, how, if anyone ever did a study on pea feeding, you know, I poultry like versus... I great. I know some of the emerald tree bows that we get in prefer to eat uh, chicks mm -hmm. or quails, but at the same time, it's hard to source live uh, feeders like that. Oh. So yeah. I think because we're so accustomed to having live rodents around, right. you know, we haven't transitioned. That, you yeah. can't feed frozen thawed chicks and stuff like that? You can, but you know, animals are picky. Sometimes they don't want to take ah, it. And okay. if you throw something live in there, they'll you know, go it for it. stimulates them right, a little bit more. Right. So. Well, pythons. Exactly. I don't, I never, I've never, I won't even try to feed them frozen thawed. I've been there before, so yeah. yeah. All right, let's keep moving. All right, now this is a, uh, a black dragon, right? right? Water that's monitor. A, that's Ferrana Salvatore. That's a melanistic. Um, Black dragon, water dragon, so water monitor. Sorry. It, now this is a female male. That's a boy. He's mm -hmm. a proven breeder. We're looking for a girl. So if anyone has an adult female or two, let me know. I'm I'm definitely looking for one for him. He'll have a big walk-in enclosure. What do you got, Paul? Do you have some? There's a female, but she's got probably another year to go. I would think. Oh, well, so you, you don't like her anyway. Give her, give yeah, me, yeah, give her. Yeah. Yeah. Send, her here, send her over to your house. I didn't want to get bit. I, 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 I want one that's socialized. You want to socialize? Yeah, you better work out. Yeah, I don't want to work on him now that he's like uh, two years old. She's two years old. It's never too late, actually. They're Is it really? really? They're so smart that I don't wow. believe that you can always get one of these to turn around. Really? Well, sure. maybe I should try them, Paul. So yeah. we should. Uh... What do you think about keeping water monitors outside in Florida? I think you can have great success with it. I think if you build the proper environment, you'll have tremendous mm -hmm. success with it. Yeah. For sure, yeah. That's what I was thinking of being, building some outdoor enclosures in my property. You could uh, do it. You got could big do property. It. You know, these guys love water, so you need, you need huge uh, water sources for them because they love to I was going to ask you that. How do you clean the water in that tub? So we use a, um, a, dry, a wet vac. We suck oh. it out, we take it out back. You can clean these things until you're blue in the face. They're gonna destroy it as soon as you put it back in there. <laughs> so Any secrets to like making it easier to clean these things? Well, the great thing about it is they actually don't go to the bathroom in their enclosure just for right. their water. Feature. Right, I know that's- So realistically, you you know, your bedding goes a long way. Having said that, you're gonna break your back cleaning the water, <laughs> but that's-, that's Is there an easier way to like plumb it or something like that where you can Absolutely. create yeah, a drain can, on it? You can something? take one of these big troughs Right. And you can install a drain with a valve on it, and you can you can drain it out, no problem whatsoever. In here, because we're in a retail location, can't do that. I start blowing through walls, I'm going to lose friends. And ah. we don't lose friends <laughs> so you actually just suck that whole. That must be how many shop vacs worth in there? That's about uh, 25, 30 gallons of oil. Wow, that's a lot of work. It is, but you know we have a good crew. And we're not as, as long as you, I was going to say, yeah. as long as you got a good crew, that's yeah. all that matters. We love the animals, so it doesn't yeah. matter what's going on. Cool. All right, Josh, let's talk about this Asian water monitor, which is something that I'm thinking about getting. And yeah. I didn't really, looking at this huge guy in person, it's like, it's pretty impressive. Now, is this, this guy you said was very well socialized, huh? She was actually not. Oh, this girl. We got her. Okay. Uh, she was not socialized at all yeah. until we brought her here. And um, ever since we had her here, she's just been super friendly. She's great with kids and everything. We take her out? Uh, yeah, she'll come right out. Let's see. She's a big girl. Look at that little girl. These are such majestic creatures, and they're so intelligent, right? Highly intelligent, and uh, you know, she doesn't really have a, a mean bone in her body. And you are—is she on the breeding list, or what is? What is she? I put a male in there one time, and she wanted to kill him. So now the, I was going to ask you that she's question. She's more on the the pet list. Now, <laughs> yeah, what what makes a? How do you find like a, a compatible male for each female, or vice versa? What, is there any? Any intelligence to that, or is there any methods to that, or is it just luck? A lot of it is size, and it just depends on the animal and uh, what's transpired in the animal's life. Realistically, mm -hmm. it's a hit or miss. It's trial and error, like anything. You know, um, you put two people together, they want to kill each other. <laughs> you know, I think we've all been there. So um, that's just what it comes down to. Her in particular, she um, she's never actually uh, been with a male. Mm -hmm. Except for that one time that I tried, and she really, really uh, wasn't having it. Now, why do you think that is? Why would she have such a bad response or reaction to it? I don't know. Maybe he looked at her wrong. 
<laughs> yeah. Could have been the he didn't have a good job. She's like, forget yeah. this. I don't want this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. You never know. And this yeah. is just a regular no morph, right? Yeah, she's just regular. She looks. She really happens. Contrary to popular belief, she loves her cage. Yeah, I see that. She's she going really right back does. in there. We bring her out, but she uh, sometimes she'll go right back in. But I think she's intrigued by it. So is this a big enough uh, water container for her? Not a hundred percent. It's good for now in the store, right. but I would definitely love to have one that's slightly larger. Right. Um, but for now in the store, you know, it, it does the trick. But she'll walk around and hang out. That's break cool. Glass. <laughs> <laughs> They're strong, huh? Yeah, she's strong. What's up, man? Is there anything to, to watch out for? Like, if you're gonna have this as a pet, I mean. I mean. Obviously, if it's an aggressive animal, you don't want to get in there with something like that because she will, you know, she'll, she'll mess you up. Right. Um, it's really the claws, and the teeth, it's a little bit of everything. So, um, but yeah, she's super friendly, so there's nothing to worry about, really. Don't, I wouldn't suggest you, I wouldn't suggest you hand her a little hopper in your hand because if she misses, she's yeah. going to take your, yeah. your finger. Yeah. But other than that, she's super friendly. You can see. She's I got bit friendly. by a monomata turtle earlier today, so. Oh, God, really? <laughs> not bad. A big one, but not bad. How'd that feel? Didn't break the skin. It felt like a like a nutcracker on my on my okay. finger. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Let's take a look at this croc monitor because these are kind of like this been my favorites ever since Tom Crutchfield. Uh, this is the me. ultimate. Uh, this is Dorothy. She's a female crocodile monitor. She's of the Maruke locality. Um, what's really cool about croc monitors is how highly, highly, highly intelligent they are. More so than the Asian waters? I really do think they're at the, they're in their own class mentally and physically. Uh, they're gorgeous animals, highly intelligent, very misunderstood because they have the ability to be, you know, the ultimate predator. Um, their teeth are uh, far larger. Um, Far larger than uh, if you look at the skeleton of a the skull of a croc monitor uh, and a Komodo dragon, you'll realize that the croc monitor actually could pack a, a, a more of a punch. Um, they're highly arboreal, highly intelligent. Um, they actually come from the same island as the blue tree monitor. Oh, cool! It's very unique. Yeah. Um, Sapa, you know, Batanta is what it's called, and I believe it's 50 square miles. Don't mm -hmm. quote me on that one. But Such a small island. It's yeah. Very small island. Um, they're highly intelligent, and not many people have had success breeding them here in the United States. So baby captive red croc monitor. Very is rare. Basically, the creme de la creme when it comes to people that work with the, any varietal species. Mm -hmm. So they're one of my favorites to work with. Not an animal you want to get if you're not an experienced keeper. Um, they really require that you go above and beyond and you respect them and give them their necessary living requirements. Because if you don't, an animal that's this intelligent, uh, that requires so much space and time and patience, if you don't have those things clicking i do not recommend you get a monitor mm. like this they deserve a lot of attention a lot of space and a lot of understanding have you bred these yet we have not bred them i have a male that's on a breeding program right now mm. uh, with an individual that breeds all localities of crocodile oh monitors. awesome i'm working on getting a boy for her because um, she is super friendly and it's you know not every day that you really a friendly croc monitor. Uh, she's not near breeding size yet. Males can reach up to you know 10 feet plus. Uh, they have really really long uh, arboreal prehensile tails. Um, but again, really intelligent and could be your best friend honestly if you put in the hard work with them. But you're gonna have to go through the fire because they. Uh, <laughs> They will test you for sure. Yeah, and so, you don't want to get bit by one of those, that's for sure. That's a hospital visit. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it's a hospital visit. Even if a 12 inch to 14 inch baby bit you, you're looking at stitches, mm -hmm. you're looking at severe damage, and you want to take them very seriously. Right. Um, so they do re deserve our respect, as do all animals, but mm -hmm. definitely crocodile monitor in general. They are up there. Where do you get all these great logs that I see you having all these things in like Cork Park? I mean, you got oh, some yeah. great stuff. Yeah, the cork bark is worth its weight in gold in this industry. There's a few wholesalers out there, but honestly, it's expensive stuff. 
Yeah. Expensive Where do you find it though? Where can people buy this stuff? Do you guys sell it? Um, we sell Zoomed Cork here, so mm -hmm. we do sell it here at the shop. But there's a few wholesalers out there. I'm not sure of the names off the top of my head. Right. We work with a few of them, but you know they're few and far. That's it. Those are big pieces you got. Those are big. Yeah, they're they're actually. They probably cost more than the monitors though. <laughs> <laughs>